Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Transy Basketball. I'm Brian Milam. He is Brian Lane, and the Transy Pioneers have had to be road warriors lately, and uh, it's always tough winning on the road. You fall to Anderson, you win in overtime at Hanover. It was a uh, wild week of basketball. It certainly was. That Anderson game, uh, we caught a team that is very, very hot, very, very hot. Yeah. And, uh, they had won four games leading up in, into that game. Uh, two games separate second and seventh place in this awesome. league. And uh, that, that in itself was incredible. But we go up there, we're up 14 points, mm -hmm. 15 points with four minutes to go in the first half. Uh, feel pretty good. Got a couple guys in foul trouble. And then, then it, it swung Where? significantly. The O.C. Lewis Gymnasium was a rocket, yeah. unfortunately not for you guys. Uh, Hanover, on the other hand, you have to, uh, it's tough to beat a team, and we'll see the highlights later, but they hit a three going into overtime, forced the overtime. Usually that team grabs the momentum, and yeah. that didn't happen in this case. Right, and this was a game going in. We knew they, they were in second place in the league, a lot on the line for them, a lot on the line for us. Sure. Uh, trying to get into that that top six spot to get into the conference tournament because anything this this year tournament that's ridiculous i mean is i mean you're talking about wide open uh anderson goes to mound on wednesday mm -hmm. and beats the number number one team in the league 27. hey your boy toby not too right. happy about that so so i mean we just got to get in that tournament and and one of the things that we talked about we have to we had to win a road game in in the conference and then take care of the the home games and uh, so far, we've done that. And you'll see as we conclude this show, Transy has to go on the road two more times, finishes up strong, hopefully at home two more times. And this is that time of the year you, you have to throw all the cards out. There's right. nothing you can hold back now. Right. And th this is a team that has evolved through, through the year. Um, one of the things that happened in the, the Hanover game that, that uh, we kind of we, we started off narrowing the bench a little bit, but then as the game progressed, uh, we, we opened it back up because of some foul situations. Played a little, lot more zone in that game, trying to get guys more, more rest. Got to the foul line. Uh, followed the scout a little bit. The guys that we say don't let them shoot threes, the they made the is. first two threes. <laughs> uh, but one, uh, one of the things that happened this week with, with the preparation for that, uh, we talked after um, two days before, well, on Monday, before the Wednesday game. And a couple of them felt like the, they, their legs were, weren't really under them the way they need to be. I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. Tomorrow, go down to the locker room, put the practice plan on the board. You all agree to it. I'll come down tomorrow, take a picture of it, and that's what we'll do. And so they, I mean, they scripted it all out. Uh, I actually cut time away from it because I, I didn't want to go as long as they, they wanted to go. Uh, but they took ownership in it, and, and it was one of the more spirited practices. And uh, so we did that again. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, we should give, maybe we should give them the, scout, the scouting report to do as well. Might as well. Might as well just throw out the scouting right. report on some of these guys, as yeah. you mentioned. Not supposed to shoot when they shoot. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Anderson game. Started great, didn't finish so great. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I want to ask you real quick, going on the road, home court advantage means so much. What are some of the toughest places in the HCAC to win? Well, I think probably for us historically, Hanover has, has been the toughest. There hasn't been many times where we rolled out of beautiful Madison, Indiana uh, <laughs> Didn't with, get to with, see the regatta. with wins. So uh, <laughs> that that is certainly one of the, the tougher places. There for a while, Manchester, uh, all the way up in northern Indiana was mm -hmm. Was a tough one, and um, but you know Anderson this, this past week that that certainly in the second half uh, they have turned it up a notch. In the first half of the Anderson ball game, things are firing. What was working well because everything was going in. Yeah, one of the things that, that we were doing, uh, you know, we shot 60% from three. We were not getting a lot of threes up, but uh, you know, shooting 60% from three right off the bat. We were making them guard us, uh, not just on one or two drives, but we were able to, to make the extra pass and get, get guys, guys shots. I've got to do a better job of getting, when Parker Stansbury, when we run plays for him, 
uh, it's pretty darn effective. Sure. And, and sometimes when we just let the plays develop, um, sometimes he doesn't always get get that uh, get the looks that he needs to get. But um, the disappointing thing in this game was we were up 15 with four minutes to go in the half, and then uh, Parker picked up a second foul. I, I promised myself when, when he got his second foul that I would continue to play him because he hasn't fouled out. Um, I, I brought him out for a little bit and I was going to give him a minute break and in that minute and a half it swung. They scored eight points and, and then uh, we fouled a three-point shooter right at the end of the half uh, for the second time this year. Our half-court defense right at the, uh, <laughs> right at the, the shot clock has got to be better. But instead of be going in down six or we're, we're, uh, up six, we're, we're three. They've got momentum, and then they came out and, uh, and really, uh, they were very aggressive, got to the foul line. Uh, they made, you know, they were 11 for 22 from three. Uh, our three-point defense this year in conference, we're giving up over 40% from, That's from amazing. three. Got, teams can't do that if they go out there without anybody guarding, uh, <laughs> and, and we're guarding them, sort of. <laughs> uh, so it's, that has to be a focus as we, we go down the stretch with these four games. When you look at also home court advantage, they shoot 35 free throws, make 32. They made eight more than you attempted. Yeah, and uh, part of that was, was us getting down late and having to be very aggressive yeah. and, and all that. And, uh, but we, we picked up some steals. We got our press in. We cut it all the way. We, we scored six points in about 25 seconds. Uh, and got got an and one, so we cut it to four, and then from from there it uh, yeah, it opened up. It, it opened up, and we have to be during those stretches. We have to be be much much tougher defensively. But I think it went back to the original statement earlier earlier in the show. Uh, I have to do a better job of getting us rest. If we're not going to play a lot of people, I have to do a better job of getting us rest. Whether it be timeouts, whether it be uh, you know, quick subs here, here or there, or do like we did and, and play a little bit more zone, so we're not chasing people all the way, uh, all the way around the court. Do you have a preference in this game? Sixty points comes from three guys. Now I don't know. I know balance. Coaches love right. balance. What do you think about when the majority of the guy points is coming from just two or three guys? Would you like to see it balanced more than that? The uh, I really I don't care if somebody scores 90 <laughs> and everybody else scores two as long as the other <laughs> team has under the, the 92. Um, with our team, we, we scored enough points to win the game. Uh, defensively, just allowing uh, you know Stanley Stanley gets his uh, his three going and, and we go into the game. This guy is hot. He's as hot as anybody in the league. We cannot let him uh, get get the shots off. And we just didn't close. A lot of times we talk about closing with high hands and getting your hands up and vision and all that. With hand, with with shooters, you got to have your hand in so they can't raise it. Because I mean, you give give him a little daylight, and and he was lights out. Well, Transy would turn the tables a few days later when we come back. They turn the tables on Hanover in overtime. Down to the wire highlights next. Hanover, you mentioned earlier, a tough place to play on the road, and you had to get a win. You meant you have to split at least on the road. You got the split in this game. How did this one start compared to the game prior when you just were lights out for 15 minutes? Right. This this was a game that was back and forth from from the beginning, and I thought we went into this game a lot more relaxed than than some of our others, and I think that was one of the reasons why we carried it carried over into the game. A lot of times in our preparation, we're very specific on run, th these are the plays that they're going to run. This is how we want to defend it. Uh, the only thing we we went over were the out of bounds plays underneath the basket, and then just talked about certain screens and how we we wanted to guard it. And I, I think it freed our guys up a little bit. Um, you know, sometimes we're very very detailed, and I I like it that way because our guys can handle it. But this was a game where it, we, we did a lot more reacting than, than just trying to, okay, what, what am I supposed to do here? Um, you know, they, they got off to, to a good start from, from three. Uh, they have a very good inside out action. A couple guys that, that really hurt us uh, at home driving to the basket, we were able to get in to help and, and help off of some other drivers so we weren't nearly uh, we weren't hurt nearly 
uh, as much with, with their guys driving to the basket. Well, they also had the Baron Michael Van Kleinen, <laughs> so you got to be happy. He had four threes. Uh, they had ten threes, and in this game, you're down six at the half. Usually, when teams trail on the road, it's a pretty hard, you know, uphill climb. You wear them out in the second half. Right, and and the big thing in that, as we went in at halftime, you know, we we had been out out rebounding on the offensive end. We had, had some turnovers uh, in this game. Um, you know, we don't normally uh, we we got to the foul line. We were being aggressive, uh, and you know, Cooper Theobald had a, had a terrific game. Got to the foul line, I think, 17 times. Yeah. Um, and but the thing that, that we're, we're doing, we're, we're, we played really hard. Uh, Alex Jones was much much better guarding guarding the the drive, and then uh, and then Parker hit some really big big shots. When teams come in, we, we knew going in after watching the, the the game earlier against Hanover, where we, we had won, you know, we were up 14 with seven to go and, and lost it at the end. Uh, how they were guarding our guys, Parker and Alex in particular. Uh, we really were able to expose that the, the second time around. Um, they do a terrific job of scouting us. Uh, we changed the names of all the plays to, to we went opposites. So if I, well, it's kind of hard to do. If I call you Brian and me Brian, it doesn't <laughs> really work that way. But, you know, on the black and blue, sure. blue became black and black became blue. And that was all good until the second half when I forgot that's what we were doing. <laughs> so just, hey, I've certain, seen that yeah. happen before where coaches call the wrong play on a wristband. Right. Hey, everything's going great. What's the problem? Right. Oh, it's a different wristband. And, and so we works. went back So we went back to the real play is the real play. Have and, you had to do that before, though, like against Mount St. Joe's? Cause, I, I do it against Toby. Yeah. Uh, um, just because, as a former assistant, he knows, he knows a lot. A lot of <laughs> <laughs> he knows where all the those skeletons are in all those plays. But uh, Hanover does a, does a nice job of scouting and, and really coming to you. And it's so much easier with your offense in front of you in the second half to to really stay away from the other teams. You know, stealing the. Yeah. Um, Early, early on, I'm yelling Florida. We don't have a Florida. We just made it up like three minutes before the the game. So when I call Florida, this is a play we're going to run. And uh, so I start yelling Florida, and their assistant jumps up and starts yelling flat, flat, flat. <laughs> and I turned to the scores table. I said, if they know that play right there, the locker room is bugged because we just made that stuff up right then. You just went with Peyton Manning, Omaha, right. Omaha. Omaha, and it, it, they they were calling out the wrong play, and we were able to score on it. <laughs> Second half, 71% shooting threes, 56% uh, shooting from twos. You really picked up the pace. They hit a three, forcing it to overtime. Yes. And that <laughs> yes, they, <laughs> yes, they did. We were up three points. Um, you know, we at, at, with 2:27 left in the game, we were down five. Um, made a couple of really big plays during that stretch, but then got to, to up three. Cooper Theobald. Um, what their fans were doing underneath the basket. You saw the video of the, the, the fans where and Arizona they State. were having the baby. <laughs> well, this guy flipped it over. I mean, it was. Um, so, Coop, Coop being able to make those two threes, uh, free throws, they should have given him three for it um, to get to get us up three. All right, here's what you're going to do. 10.7, 10 10 we'll get it to the half court. Inside five seconds, we're going to foul. They go to the line for two. They're going to make one miss. All the things that you know, there's there's a deep study on yeah. on what to do, um, and it, it's all great in theory. Except we forgot to foul. We talked timeout. We're going to foul. We didn't foul. Uh, guard your guy outside the three. Let him step inside two. That didn't work out as well. When you when you do that in the second, when you lose the lose the momentum like that a lot of times and you go to overtime and you you're toast and uh, our guys responded I don't believe they they had a field goal in overtime and in overtime Transy would get the victory 84 to 78 so we get the split on the road and then transy has got to do it all over again uh, this weekend and then hit the road again and then come back home let's take a look at how the standings entering this week and you mentioned earlier it is a cluster a log jam and you know mathematically everybody in from one through six there is still mathematically alive to win this thing Yes, and uh, you know Go it, it's incredible. Uh, we still have Franklin and and Manchester coming coming to us. We had the the Bluffton game yesterday, on the road to Mount, on the road to De Defiance. Those those will be two games that that really 
will have a huge bearing on, on where our standing, uh, where our seed will be uh, in the 2016 HCAC basketball got, tournament. <laughs> we still have a long way to go with the season. Four games, anything can happen. When we come back, it's flashback time, and this is a good one. All right, we're going to go back in time as we have this entire year real quick. October of 2000, let's kind of go back 99, 2000. Where were you back during that time? Do you remember? October 2000, I would have been at Moorhead State University. Moorhead State That's University. Right. Kyle Macy was there at that time. But Very the, good team. But the pioneers, 15, 16 years ago, they were trapped in a bubble. And if you forgot, here's what it looked like. Transy's old Kentucky home for 71 years was torn down to make way for the new $14 million Beck Athletic and Recreation Center. So until it is complete, the men's and women's basketball teams have been provided a new place to practice, the bubble. The air support structure located over three tennis courts keeps the teams on campus, but the transition hasn't been easy, especially knowing that the Pioneers will have to play their home games at six area colleges and two local high schools. I mean, you always count on a home game as being a game you like and you enjoy because you're used to the gym and your fans. And, um, but we have seven seniors this year and a lot of experience, which will really help us um, playing all our games on the road, really. I mean, we have no real home games. The new facility is set to open in early 2002, and Coach Don Lane is excited but says he has a lot of memories from McAllister Auditorium. Oh, I, I'd, I'd lie if I told you otherwise because it was, I spent so many hours in, in McAllister, and to watch it go down was pretty, it was pretty heart rich. And, uh, but since then, once that new facility started to emerge out of the ground, it kind of gives us gives us all a new interest and a new new life, and the bubble's kind of been a, an exciting kind of thing to have. Our players are enjoying it. By the way, both teams will open their season on November third. For Twenty Seven Sports First, I'm Stacy Floden. Basketball in a bubble, fifteen and a half, fifteen plus years ago, that had to be interesting. When I first saw the video. I thought, are they in a yeah. regional somewhere and I playing could, in a dome? What is that? We practiced, my first year we practiced there up until the uh, Beck Center opened in January. Uh, you see them, there was a tennis court on one side. The basketball court was the Miami Heat floor. It still had the NBA playoff logo on, on the floor. They would uh, shipped it up and, and put in new baskets. They said they put enough wood underneath that floor to support it to build a small house. So hopefully we were able to use that wood. Uh, to, to do that afterwards, but that team to have the, they went, they're practicing there, not uh, home game one and, and going to the national tournament ranked the number one team. That was impressive. Was that a Lee Rose connection somehow to get the Miami Heat floor? Did he think, pull NBA strings no, I think or we something? bought it on eBay. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and then we ended up having to sell it after afterwards, but boy, it would be great to be able to have that, that bubble for, for oh other things. But Keep, keeping that thing heated uh, in the winter to the level that you need to from a basketball standpoint with guys running around in, in shorts, that, that was difficult. It would be hot in the summer as well. Well, Transy, that year was hot going to the national tournament, ranked number one in the country. So maybe we'll break out the bubble again sometime. Right. You never know. When we come back, we'll take a wrap on this show. Great time of the year right now. We're winding down basketball, the Sweet 16 easy draw. For you to say. Yeah, it's easy <laughs> for me. I don't have to coach or play. Uh, the Sweet 16 draw was earlier this week. That's a time for you to get out and recruit, obviously. We come down the home stretch of the Heartland Conference schedule. Here's what you've got four games left, two on the road, two at home. You want to be clicking at the end and, and all the things that we've gone through this year uh, through injuries and through getting different people, different. Uh, positions to play. This should be a really fun two weeks and uh, I like where our team is. I, I like our mentality. I like the fact that they're doing the practice plans. They've bought <laughs> in. They, kn they know that I can't go flying off in another direction. They know what, what's ahead every, every night out. They know what, what we're up against and we can go on the road and win some games. 
two games you have to go to MSJ. They're still leading coming in. The last two you have to you have to hold serve right. at home. You have to do, and that's one of the things that put us in this situation as we lost a couple home games yeah. early that you can't afford to lose. And certainly. Uh, looking forward to the next couple weeks. It should be interesting. We're coming down the stretch, and you can join us next weekend for another edition of Transy Basketball. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy your weekend.